So sorry, I switched to English now. Uh, we introduce you the German Institute of, of, of DLR for electric propulsion system, which is newly created. And the head of the institute, Professor Enghardt, will give you an overview what they are destined to do here. He was already in my session on electric propulsion systems on Wednesday, but there we had only eight minutes time, which is always too short to give a real overview. And we also have a Professor Mollenkamp from the BTU Chesco, um, which you, uh, you see it's a BTU Cottbus Senftenberg, so you know it's in the eastern part of Germany located and it's a newly created university. You correct me later when I say something wrong. And his colleague, uh, Professor Dr. Hölscher, also from the BTU. So I don't make too many words. I hand my word to the first speaker, which is Professor Dr. Enghardt from the DLR Institute of Electrified Aero Engines. It's your research. Okay. So, um, good morning, everybody. Um, the next presentation will be, yeah, okay, about uh, the new institute, uh, the new DLA Institute in Cottbus, the Institute of Electrified Aero Engines. Um, the uh, motivation um, is quite clear, and uh, a lot of uh, Colleagues in different uh, in the expo uh, ex exhibition have already explained why uh, we are seeking to fly electrically and uh, why we are um, reducing or trying to reduce the environmental footprint, the environmental impact of aero engines. On this slide, you see different po pollutants that uh, are stemming from um, from aircraft. Uh, first of all, CO2 uh, is to be reduced, NOx is to be reduced, ozone and soot, and last but not least, uh, water vapor um, con in contrails and of course noise is uh, something that uh, we are going to tackle in the next year. We are going to we are about to reduce uh, the noise emission of aero engines. Um, here you see this document summarizing what uh, the vision in Europe is, it's called uh, Fly Plus 2050, and there um, it is stated that uh, the CO2 emissions are to be reduced by 75% in the year 2050, NOx emissions by 90%, ozone and soot um, yeah, are to be diminished at all, um, and uh, we are going to perform a lot of research on the impact of water vapor on um, the global heating effect. And last but not least, uh, noise is to be reduced by 65% in each of the operating conditions. So uh, what is our mission in Cottbus? The new institute is going to pursue uh, research on emission um, uh, free or nearly emission free and climate friendly um, low noise new novel uh, propulsion systems um, we are our approach is a holistic approach so we are tackling the whole system of, uh, of the whole uh, propulsion drive train and uh, the research um, portfolio is uh, is to be uh, is um, well uh, dedicated to innovative uh, alternative uh, propulsion technologies um, in Brandenburg. Uh, this is um, connected with the um, um, ignite. I think. Um, Reduction of of, 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 uh, of lignite um, mining, yeah, that's I think that's the word, and uh, so the there are going to be a a whole um, restructuration of the whole um, area uh, in, um, towards a new high technology um, hotspot, I would say, for uh, aero. Uh, uh, aerodynamic, aeroacoustic uh, 
um, and aeronautical research. Um, so, um, and DLR brings, uh, last but not least, of course, its own uh, research network which spans over the whole uh, Republic of, of, of Germany. So, uh, what is the motivation? The motivation uh, you can see here. Uh, Airbus has stated uh, recently in a press release uh, that they want to fly uh, emission free uh, up to the, uh, they want to bring new products to market up to the year 2035, which will be powered either by uh, purely electric propulsion. That's uh, the case for the first picture that you see here. This is a turboprop, which is powered by uh, three pots on each wing and will transport uh, 100 passenger uh, on, on a mission of about 1,000 nautical miles. And then in the middle you see a picture of a modified turboprop engine which has um, H2 um, direct combustion. Um, again, same mission, 100 passenger, 1,000 miles. And in the lower part you see a maybe um, um, aircraft which is a little bit more into a perspective into the future with 200 passenger with distributed electric propulsion again based on hydrogen and um, flying range or missions might be 2,000 nautical miles. So what are the propulsion systems about? What, uh, uh, what are the ingredients for electrified um, aero propulsion? see here different examples uh, on the right hand side um, there is uh, a classical uh, aero engine so a classical gas turbine but this one is powered by hydrogen in the middle part you see um, a revolutionary propulsion system based on um, um, fuel cell combined with battery and on the left side you see combination of a gas turbine powered by sustainable aviation fuel with a hydrogen powered, uh, sorry there is, no, there is no fuel cell, with a battery and uh, there is this uh, combination of both in parallel they drive the propulsor. So uh, different um, possibilities of serial and parallel topologies uh, are possible and the combination of both will be uh, will be um, uh, things that we are going to uh, research in the future. So um, the um, um, exciting uh, situation at the time being is that we don't really know which of these different propulsion systems will be the propulsion system that uh, uh, will power um, electrified air engines uh, or the whole uh, aircraft in the future. As I said, there is this holistic approach. Uh, so uh, you see the research profile of the new institute here, sketched in, in different uh, icons. We have uh, component technologies. We are dealing with the architecture of new drive trains. There is this um, um, aeronautical requirements and environmental impact. And we have control of the whole um, um, driving system and last but least we have experimental facilities and infrastructure that we will um, operate in Cottbus and for each of these uh, different um, departments actually we have we will have five different departments in our institute in Cottbus I will show you some examples starting off with the components there will be for instance components of course new um, electrical drive tents consists of, um, of different components, uh, for instance the electrical parts like the electric motor and the, um, the electric, the, the motor control unit, then there is um, lightweight construction involved and last but not least of course uh, the thermal management is a big issue that we are going to tackle in this uh, department and here you see one of the uh, examples where uh, a control system as well as um, energy uh, support or um, derivation is, um, is, um, is needed. Here we have a fuel cell system which is 
uh, in this example, powering two different pots uh, where the um, electrical drive chain is situated in this propeller-driven uh, aircraft on the left side. And on the right side you see a fuel cell system which uh, sounds from the first uh, point of view quite simple but you see that a control system is needed and there we have different uh, parameters, different uh, um, areas of control where we need to, to take care of this uh, rather one of the um, um, electrical, uh, one of the um, um, components of this uh, electrical drive tree. The next uh, department or next area of research is the architecture of the whole um, drivetrain system. There we are looking at the uh, interrelation and interaction of different components and uh, we see which components uh, can um, uh, or uh, will, be, will be used to, um, to, um, uh, yeah, to come to put a whole drive chain together. Here we have uh, different parts of research uh, or different areas of research. The first is that we are modeling electrified um, topologies. Then there is this integration task. Of course, if you uh, define a, um, mod an, an optimized electrical drive chain, this has to be integrated into the aircraft structure. With is of course, which is of course a big challenge. And uh, finally, um, as uh, currently there are no theoretical models available, we need to experimentally validate uh, the uh, different um, identified, optimized, from a theoretical point of view, optimized electrified um, um, drive or uh, propulsion topologies. An example of um, such a uh, theoretical modeling task you can see here. There's the, the propeller which is driven by, uh, by a gearbox um, or uh, the motor is driving the propeller and uh, there's a gearbox in between the electric motor. Then you see the um, um, motor control unit. We have some cabling which connects the whole system with the energy source which is, which is in this case a fuel cell and the fuel cell is powered by the liquid uh, hydrogen tank and uh, you see for instance on this picture that at different points in this drive train you have um, thermal management systems which are really needed and uh, uh, will, will have to be taken a special care in research, in research um, projects to see whether uh, the whole system um, will get the um, um, yeah, heat overshoot or the heat that is produced by, uh, by the electrical system will uh, take care of, a pro of, of transporting all this out of the aircraft. Um, aeronautical requirements and environmental impact. Um, from our point of view, one of the biggest obstacles that we have on our way to electrify uh, aero um, um, aircraft is really uh, aeronautical requirements. Aeronautical requirements is a, is a, is a big hurdle on our way, uh, which, uh, which means that we have um, safety and security requirements um, in, in um, certification is, is an issue here. We have to collaborate with different institutions for instance, the, uh, in Germany, the uh, Luftfahrtbundesamt and EASA. We need to, uh, we need to uh, collaborate quite closely with them to get all these systems on a safety and security level, which is comparable, or uh, in the first instance, comparable to, uh, to the standards that we have today with, uh, with uh, flying gas turbines. And this, uh, this will be a, uh, one of the biggest challenges on our way to uh, electrify um, the, few, the um, pr transportation, air transportation means of tomorrow. Of course, uh, environmental impact is also an issue. If you see, um, for instance, here, um, of course, uh, if we look at uh, gaseous emissions, we will be able, by electrifying air engines, um, to reduce them uh, quite substantially, but uh, what about noise? Noise, um, uh, if, you, if you think of um, um, a noisy aircraft, 
this is not uh, naturally um, being noise is not naturally being reduced by just electrifying the whole uh, system, and and e even even um, even more, you will get additional noise sources which are um, depicted here on this slide. There is uh, vibration which comes into play if we have a gas turbine embedded into the fuselage, and of course there are a, a, a gearbox noise. Uh, the electric motor uh, produces noise as well, and um, a distributed uh, propulsion is also a noise source uh, which is um, um, not yet well or completely. It is well understood, but not completely. Control of the um, drive transmission issue. So here we are dealing with uh, digital um, engine control as a whole. Um, you, you know very well that we have the FADEC system in uh, classical gas turbines, uh, but uh, and for for these new electrified uh, aero engine drive trains, we need uh, something uh, similar to FADEC uh, systems as well. Of course, uh, error detection and predictive uh, maintenance is, is an issue for, for future error engines. This is something that is directly linked with control systems and um, again, modeling of different control approaches to ease the life of uh, future pilots that are steering um, electrified um, aircraft is, uh, is a part of our research. An example of an existing project is not far away from here in Oberfaffenhofen. We have this uh, aircraft 228, and uh, one of the um, engines will be replaced in a, um, in a uh, future project by an electrified drivetrain so that uh, this aircraft here, partly um, equipped with an, electric uh, with an electric propulsion system, uh, will be flying in the year 2026. That's the plan uh, from now on. Last but not least, uh, we, we, we have uh, experimental facilities and infrastructure. Uh, what we are planning to do in Cottbus is really to deal with, um, on, a, on a very large basis, with component testing, uh, electromagnetic uh, compatibility testing, um, whole drivetrain testing in terms of um, um, yeah, fuel cells and then we have high voltage testing, lightning strike is an issue especially for electrified um, drivetrains and um, altitude compatibility is something that we are going to do, we are going to stress like the whole electrified drivetrain, put it in a pressure pressurized, temporized um, chamber and test them in conditions, uh, flying conditions, uh, up there at 35, 35 feet high. So what we, uh, what do we uh, erect in Cottbus? What different uh, establishments, experimental establishments, will be built there? We uh, we take a uh, classical regional aircraft as a role model and uh, take uh, the box size of such an aircraft which is 30 times 30 meter then we half it because we think that aircraft are symmetrically um, designed or built uh, so we have the the size of our future different experimental test stands uh, which is then which makes 15 times 30 meter and there we have these uh, different um, test, experimental test facilities like the, the uh, high voltage testing, component testing, electromagnetic compatibility test and finally these altitude uh, testing uh, on realistic conditions uh, in, in the, for, for, flying, for the flying altitude of about 30,000 feet. This is the summary of what we are going to do there in Cottbus. Uh, there will be uh, office buildings for up to 150 employees, which we uh, hope to, to employ in, in the year 2025-2026. So, uh, by the way, we are hiring at the time being. Um, then you see these uh, two different buildings where we have the experimental facilities, uh, which was the experimental facilities that I was just mentioning. And here you see some, some graphical impressions how this 
could look like in the year 2026. From left to right we have high voltage testing, then we have the different individual components and whole drive trains that will be tested, electromagnetic compatibility with this uh, wall lining with uh, um, reflection free material and on the right hand side um, altitude testing with, for the whole drive train. Yeah, finally, this is my last slide, um, there is an already existing broad competence network uh, where this new uh, DLR Institute uh, is embedded in, of course, so there will be a knowledge exchange possible between all these different DLR Institutes already uh, up and running and the new, uh, newly uh, built or opened, um, founded institute in Cottbus. And of course, and this is not uh, showed here, shown here, but this is um, something which builds the bridge. To the next presentation, there will be a strong collaboration with the uh, BTU Cottbus Eftenberg, which is situated in Cottbus. Um, yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, contact us uh, via email or the contact uh, form, which you can find on our website. Okay, thank you very much. And one information I know at the show, there are also a lot of things to do. We are recording the sessions and you will have time to watch it also afterwards. But sure, if you stay until the end, you can ask your questions, which is also, I think, quite interesting. Um, next, we just listen that this is in Cottbus, uh, very well connected with the new BTU. And now we'll hear what uh, the uh, uh, BTU uh, Cottbus Senftenberg will do on research in the field of the innovative aviation. Thank you. Um, yeah, good morning also from my side, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we both together, Georg Möhlenkamp and myself, will present what we're going to do or what we're currently setting up in Cottbus and I give you an overview about the contents, locations, um, yeah, what we plan. Um, the basic motivation, um, and you've seen that on this exhibition already in, in some products, is clearly that uh, we believe that electrified and hybrid electrified aero um, propulsion systems will become a real option, also not also for general aviation as this exhibition is, but also for commercial flying in the future. Um, prospectively, say this hybrid electric systems can actually cover up to 90% of all flights happening every day on the world. So there's a huge market where we've seen this application can really um, can materialize later on. What you also know that in the aerospace industry, safety is the first uh, priority. And we are talking um, to become climate neutral, as the Green Deal uh, from the EU clearly says, by 2050. It's just 28 years uh, away. So, and sometimes new innovations in the aerospace industry takes years, sometimes decades. So what is quite clear, we need to accelerate the, the number of iterations the, the, to steepen the learning curve as much as, we, uh, as possible. Is. And Ideally, uh, if you would have um, a place where you can design, manufacture and test these uh, complete new systems that would clearly accelerate the learning curve and that exactly is planned in Cottbus. The second motivation and uh, Lars Enghardt already said that um, is uh, in the Federal uh, uh, Republic of, of Germany, the, the Federal Government decided to step, uh, step out by 2038 of the lignite-fired uh, lignite power plants in the Lusatia region, where Cottbus is. We have many power plants and open mining, and we want to close that by 2038 uh, latest. So that means also that a lot of SMEs we have in that region need a new business um, and we want to develop that through Chesco also that we want to become a nucleus for a new kind of um, business for the companies uh, which are on site in the Lusatia region. 
The BTU, as I said before, is uh, seen from the government, um, from the regional, the state government, as the nucleus for this um, economical transformation. And because BTU has a, a quite a long tradition, although we are, well, a little bit more than 30 years just old, um, we have a long tradition in uh, electric, uh, in, in electromechanic, in uh, electricity, um, um, uh, engineering, uh, in mechanical engineering, and especially in air engines. Because we are working since more than 20 years together with the companies Rolls Royce, uh, which is located in Brandenburg, has a big site there. And we are also at the BTU, uh, a so-called University Technology Center. Uh, within the network of the Rolls-Royce UTC network. <coughs> and that makes it unique that Cottbus, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Cottbus is the place uh, where this kind of development should take place. Thank you, Klaus. Um, what I want to say is, from these two motivation uh, streams, this was the reason why the new center for hybrid electric systems in Cottbus was founded. So not as was said before, BTU is new, BTU is not a new university, it's an existing old university, but we, are, we have now founded this new research center for hybrid electric systems in Cottbus, which is um, adjacent to the university, it is owned by the university, but it's not the university. Um, uh, on the right hand side top you see the three main, let's say, research areas which are also, let's say, uh, then founded in buildings. So we have the, the research center, which, uh, which is there, you know, for all this engineering, designing, simulation, construction works, including a um, um, virtual reality workshop where the components, motors, whatever are designed can be, let's say, taken uh, into an in intensive view before they are manufactured. This leads me to the second part, which is also then the second building, which is a kind of factory, we call it FMERC, Fast Make Electrification Research Center, which allows us to build very quickly the prototypes of the new components needed, um, and also to do some research on the manufacturing of these new components. Uh, the third part is also very important, and this is a test facility, from what we believe, uh, this is unique in terms of that we can test here all <coughs> um, test conditions that are specified in the certification rules, um, uh, for example, for vibration, environmental conditions, and so on and so forth. But the electric systems, battery electric systems, hybrid electric systems can be operated and can be even operated under full power conditions or even under fault conditions. And uh, this is a unique thing. There are, there are test benches somewhere in the world, even in Germany, for example, for high altitude testing. But um, they are not, let's say, uh, ready to operate electrical systems like this. <coughs> when we look on the left-hand side, there you see this innovation circle that Klaus mentioned that we want to improve drastically, where we want to become much, much faster than aircraft industry is today <coughs> by having the design the production and the test of the components and products on one place, adjacent to each other, but not only through that, also by applying um, uh, thorough uh, digital processes for all the three, so that all goes into one uh, digital database, <coughs> and uh, therefore that this transformation uh, of data, you know, from one form to another form is, uh, is avoided. Um, this also has to be developed, um, it is not there, <coughs> but this allows us to close the circle of, of you know, um, designing, production, testing, and then evaluation of the results much faster than it is possible today, and therefore to support the aircraft industry in Germany uh, by uh, uh, developing this equipment um, on, on time. <coughs> Uh, on the left-hand side, on the bottom, you see the timelines. Actually, all these buildings um, uh, are confirmed. Um, the funding stream is secured, so we will build this research center. But as you know, such buildings uh, to build and to equip with all these facilities takes a lot of time, a couple of years. Therefore, we want to start now, and uh, we are going to rent 
uh, buildings in Cottbus to start now because today is a day when uh, electrified and hybrid electrified uh, uh, propulsion systems for air, air industry must be uh, started to develop. When we look back on the right hand side in the middle there we see the research areas that we are going to research and clearly the biggest challenge is are the electrical systems and components. I mean it's clear that if this should become a Z drive train for aircraft there must be factors of improvement in the power density of the drive components and also factors of improvement in the energy density of the, of the storage systems, for example batteries or hydrogen tanks and all that stuff. So this is clearly, let's say, the, the one uh, research area. The second research area is the manufacturing, the manufacturing of these components. Uh, not only to be able to build a, pr a prototype or, or a one-off component, but also to support the aircraft industry in manufacturing methods so that uh, the volumes can be manufactured that the aircraft industry finally needs. The third um, uh, field is clearly what I call the prime mover. So where does the electrical energy come from? So for either from a, from a fuel cell or from an optimized gas turbine with the generator set attached to it. Um, what will be the, the fuels? Uh, maybe hydrogen, maybe sustainable aviation fuel, which comes out of uh, renewable energies. Um, uh, so there's also a big, big field of research and, uh, and another field is the digital circle that I mentioned on the left hand side. There is no supplier in the world that can deliver such a digital um, circle for this complex process and therefore this is also a big uh, research field. Last but not least, I just want to mention that clearly the aircraft industry is actually the main focus because here is this, you know, very exciting uh, um, a challenge uh, where we want to help to overcome, but uh, also other branches like maybe off-road cars or train or maybe ship applications will also be researched. So this is not a special hybrid electric research center for aircraft, but a general hybrid electric research center. And with this I give back to Klaus for the place to be. All right, uh, Leo just mentioned uh, we have started already uh, with the research last year and we are in the process of building up the, the center right now. Uh, that's a picture of the city of Cottbus. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see the uh, red uh, button in the, in the lower right area is uh, our famous library, uh, which you can see, it's a, it's a quite famous architecture icon there. And on the left hand side you can see an airfield. And that is a, a former airfield operated by the German Democratic Republic before the reunification. And this airfield is closed. And uh, you can see still the runway there is covered by photovoltaic modules in the meantime. But exactly this area we want to develop in Cottbus. And you can see this kind of um, bot in, in the middle. And if you increase that, you can see that's the area where we want to build um, Chesco. Um, the uh, Chesco itself, uh, as um, Georg just mentioned, is the research center, is the fast make electrification research center in the more purple uh, color and the, the, the big test center. And as mentioned before by Lars uh, Enghardt, the, the yellow one is the DLR test center where we share the infrastructure for the high altitude tests because we want to test um, up to 60 kilometers altitude and that means we need to lower the pressure and re reduces the, um, the temperature significantly and this is shared through that uh, SICOM used powerhouse between DLR and us. Um, because such buildings take place um, and as I said before we want to start now we have, or we did rent already some halls uh, in the east part of Cottbus and we will move into these ones in June this year already and this 
called Interim Chesco. We have three halls, the, the blue ones marked here, um, where you can see a, a little picture on the left side of our empty halls, very new, just 10 years old. In total we have more than 5,000 square meters available and we move in with FMERC and with the first part of the uh, test center into that one. We're currently renovating or modifying this area and we are in the process of um, uh, buying the manufacturing machines. In total, we move in into these machines with about 150 different machines. And as I said, we are in the process of setting up also the digitalization of these uh, machines. Uh, the connection on the, between each other will start in the second half of that year. And we think that beginning of next year we are fully operable. We have also some uh, uh, um, offices uh, rent there. In total, by next year, we will have 75 places where uh, researchers can move in and do the research there. Coming now to the um, to the uh, contents side of uh, FMERC, uh, so about photo machines. As I said before, in FMERC we will have about 150 different machines and uh, this comprises everything you need in order to produce electrical machines, uh, gas turbines or every component. We don't do that alone. We do it in cooperation with Fraunhofer Institutes. We have five different Fraunhofer Institutes uh, in cooperation with us and also a, a, a little company called Access um, coming from Aachen. Uh, they're doing uh, the um, uh, the, um, say the, the, the purring, purring of, of components, just switching to English, the purring of, of the components, for example, um, the casting, now that's the right drawing, so, so the casting processes, uh, but all, all the other things, the, the complete machining will be there, uh, the uh, mechanical, we have uh, three different five axe uh, machining, milling machines there. We have the, uh, the heat treatment, so three furnaces where we do the heat treatment of components. We have for post-processing also like HIP, for example, that's a very expensive process where if you, uh, for example, print 3D components and you need to go through a HIP process, so high intensity pressure process, in order to reduce the porosity of the components to make them airworthy. Uh, all the same post-processing, the inspection, uh, a dedicated uh, um, laboratory for, for measuring the parts, the, the complete setup for building electrical machine, including winding machines, um, the technical, um, say, uh, usual technical, uh, stuff you have to, uh, in, in, in such a thing and also because of the, we're going for 3D printing um, in, in a lot of cases we need the raw material and this, uh, that needs a special storage. Yeah, thank you again. So um, the, in, when it comes to the test center we believe that this is really the most unique uh, opportunity uh, that we offer for for other, for other partners as well. So we will have this uh, uh, test facility for high altitude testing, which will be uh, two parts. One uh, for um, a machine which needs a lot of air, so where we can test, for example, a turbine or a fuel cell or maybe a combustion engine, which um, drives then a generator. Um, adjacent to that test cell is another test cell with the same altitude conditions, but much less um, air uh, surflow need uh, and this will then cover you know all the electrical equipment meaning uh, the inverters the protection systems the cables both chambers are big enough than a kind of um, copper bird installation um, of this uh, electrical drive trains can be uh, can be uh, mounted so that finally um, clearly very good test results uh, can be achieved uh, the altitude that can be can be uh, arrived there is uh, uh, required to be 16,000 feet. So this is the maximum feet that uh, the maximum altitude that, that uh, uh, airplanes can fly today. 
Um, there's also a small altitude chamber because uh, it's very uh, cost intensive to, to operate um, these things. For example, to test one component, one motor, one inverter under high altitude, and clearly all the components have to go through the small test chamber, chamber to, uh, to prove that they can work under these conditions before we set up the complete system test in the big test chamber. There's also a test field for the, uh, what we call electrical integration of the system. This is an, a test field uh, which is big enough to have something like an iron bird installation of a complete uh, electric or hybrid electric airplane system. And uh, uh, this is uh, not, not only used for commissioning the system and makes the system up and running, but also in a second test phase to apply faults which can be, which can be uh, short circuits or load shedding or uh, faults in the controls or in the communication in between the controls. We will have an, another test uh, stand for vibration and shock conditions which is uh, according to the um, uh, aircraft uh, safety rules DU160. Another one is for uh, environmental atmospheric conditions uh, where we can set up atmospheric conditions like, uh, you know, very low temperature and high uh, humidity. So this could be, you know, the London fog or the other extreme could be very high temperature and, and sand. Uh, this could be, you know, the sandstorm in Riyadh. Because airplanes fly around in the world, and they, they have to stand all these conditions and therefore the, the, the safety uh, standard DU160 um, requires this kind of tests and therefore we will build up test sense and as I said in the beginning already I think the unique thing here is really that electrical components of hybrid electric systems or battery electric systems can be tested under these conditions under full load uh, or part load or, or all different kind of operations. Another test is, uh, you know, ju just to test the complicated controls. When you compare such a hybrid electric uh, uh, propulsion system, you have much more um, components that have to be controlled, you know, the battery management system, the inverters which control the motors and so on and so forth. That means you have much more hardware and software compared to a conventional airplane and therefore we will set up such a test field for only the controls and the communication in between the controls um, also uh, to do the commissioning of such a system but also then to apply uh, failures into the system. Another one is a, a heat test uh, stand according to uh, this uh, DU160 standard which means that uh, we will simulate a fire on board and uh, behind a fire protection wall uh, the components have to be operated. That means uh, with gas burners uh, we uh, uh, arrive something like, like 1000 degree Fahrenheit and behind this, uh, this uh, firewall which is equal to the firewall in an airplane the components need to run for minimum 5 minutes. Uh, this is according to the standards that will be applied in Cottbus as well. Last but not least, we will have a dedicated uh, component test stand for uh, heat exchangers and cooling systems and heating systems because we believe that the complexity of uh, hybrid electric systems needs a very, very uh, demanding thermal management and to, uh, to test, um, uh, let's say, very innovative uh, components for this terminal management, we will set up here an extra test stand. Last but not least, I want to explain quickly the digital infrastructure. It's clear that uh, when we want to arrive in the circle, you know, of this digital uh, um, engineering, uh, production, testing and evaluation process, we need to have a new complex uh, digital infrastructure. But what is on top of everything is cyber security. So it's clear that this digital infrastructure has to be open for our partners. So maybe industry partners or other research institutes uh, which will uh, cooperate with us or which are already cooperating with, with us. On the one hand side, but on the other hand side, it's clear that we are doing research uh, on the edge that many people in the world are interested uh, uh, to steal these informations and to, to look into the results and so on and so forth. And for cyber security is really a very, very important piece. But then we will also have a set of, um, of uh, development tools 
of uh, uh, manufacturing tools, uh, simulation tools, and it's, the, the new approach here is that we want to link these tools in that sense that data which are generated in one step, for example in the simulation, when it comes to engineering, that they are automatically transferred in a, uh, 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 in a data system that the, the next step of software can automatically uh, apply. Then, for example, from the construction data, that automatically the, the, the machine data for manufacturing are uh, uh, generated from this data so that nobody manually has to program on, on a, let's say a robot or a, a five-axis uh, uh, manufacturing machine, that all this is done automatically, that the machines automatically generate the quality data, measure the, the quality data, that these data go back in the database, and finally the test, that the test results are um, automatically or half automatically uh, concentrated to 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 uh, to the results, and that these results are then uh, immediately available to all other steps like the evaluation. So you see, also this digital infrastructure is a huge uh, challenge, and also is a rich field for for further research. Uh, altogether, the the investment. Um, uh, that is agreed to by the government of the state of Brandenburg is uh, about uh, 240 million euro only for investment and uh, about 20 million actually for the startup cost. Thank you very much. So later on maybe we can have uh, questions. Thank you very much. So if uh, there are any questions here, you can ask them now. If not, uh, maybe take the contact details and they, your booth, is, there is a booth uh, here in Aero Friedrichshafen, uh, it's in A, A5, uh, what, what the booth number? You know? It's, uh, it's A, A5 301, so if you have any questions which, you're, uh, uh, which you don't ask here, as I don't see any raised hands, then uh, drop by there. It's very interesting, um, and uh, with this, I think we close here. Thank you very much for coming, and hope to hear with you again, because eFlight is growing. The eFlight Expo here is growing over the last 10 years, so I hope to see you again. Thank you. How can you get eFlight Donald? Just scan the QR code on this page. Or just type in your browser www.eflightjournal.com Then you receive the page with the latest online news on electric flying, EV tolls and everything which is connected with electric mobility in the air or you can click the link on the top and then you go to the latest PDF version which you either can read in the Yumpu reader directly on your screen like a conventional magazine or you can go and download the magazine as PDF file so that you can read it offline wherever you want. Thanks for watching and goodbye.
Hi.